Okay, in this section of the course, we're going to be looking at a number of separate APIs that you won't use in every application, but when you need to, you can come back to this section and refer to the implementation details. Here we're talking about things such as using location services, accessing the social networking mechanisms, talking to the file system, and so forth. We're going to begin by talking about location services. That allows you to answer the following types of questions. Where am I? Have I moved? And have I changed direction, at least on a device that has a compass such as the iPhone? And there's two main classes we're going to look at, CL Location Manager and CL Geocoder. CL Location Manager computes the location of your device based on GPS and or cell tower data if the GPS is turned off and or Wi-Fi data for things like the iPod Touch. CL Geocoder allows you to convert coordinates from digital coordinates into human readable names in a process called reverse geocoding. In order to demonstrate these kinds of things that we're looking at in this section, we're going to always start with a completed application rather than building up an application from scratch because there's usually a fair amount of infrastructure to set up to do these things. So we'll begin by taking a look at our geolocation application. So let's go ahead and give it a run in the simulator. Before we start tracking the location, I want you to notice that here under the debug menu, under the location submenu, there's a number of different types of locations that the simulator can provide for you. You can provide data such as what's happening with a freeway drive, or with a human running around a city, or a bicycle ride, a single location such as the location of Apple's headquarters, or a number of effectively random locations which are the location of the Apple stores. So we're going to start out with a city bicycle ride. We're going to go ahead and click Start Tracking Location. And the iOS is going to ask us if we want to allow this application to start using our location. In this case, we're going to say yes. And now we're going to see a number of coordinates come by. As the coordinates are delivered by GPS and perhaps the cell towers, you see that here we've got our longitude and latitude. It shows us what our accuracy is, in this case, 5 meters. Our speed, roughly five and a half meters per second. Our course, looks like we're heading roughly directly west, 270 degrees. And a timestamp that shows you when this particular location was delivered. And the reason that's important is sometimes the first timestamp you get from location services is the last location, which might have been a long ways away, say if your user had jumped on an airplane and flew across the country and then got off. We use this data here to also ask what's the current accuracy. You can ask that separately. And then we've got code in here that reverse geocodes the location, these coordinates here, longitude and latitude, into a more human readable form. In this case, our person who's doing the bicycle ride is on Homestead Road in Sunnyvale in the Cherry Chase neighborhood. All right, let's take a look at how this is all put together. Just for reference purposes, our storyboard here simply has a button that starts the tracking process and some labels. A label here where we put the GPS data, a label here where we put the reverse geocoded data, and another label where we put the accuracy data. Nothing very fancy there. If we take a look at our viewcontroller.h, you can see we've done just two things. We've imported core location, and we've said that our class implements CL Location Manager Delegate. That's because all the location services is done with callbacks. And you can expect multiple calls as the accuracy increases. If you ever use the Maps application, you know that sometimes it starts out with a great big circle saying you're roughly in this area, and then zooms in closer and closer to where you actually are. And in order to be able to access core location, we had to add a framework here, the core location framework. And we did that, as you do with all frameworks, by coming up here, going to Build Phases, going down here to Link with Libraries, clicking the Add button, and selecting Core Location. Now let's take a look at the code. We first of all have three properties that are the IB outlets for those three labels we looked at on the screen here. A instance of the Location Manager, and we'll talk about that in a minute, and a couple of local variables so that we can determine whether we've seen our location or not before, and the location as a string for use in other parts of our application. Turn this off here. Come down here. And so let's look at the start tracking method, which is connected up to our start tracking button. The first thing that you have to do is ask whether or not you have authorization to use location services. And you do that by asking the location manager using its static method authorization status to get the CL authorization status instance. 
and then we look to make sure that it's either not status denied and not status restricted. So if the user has not turned off location services for this particular app in the settings app, that means we have access to it. And what we do is we go instantiate an instance of CL Location Manager, and then we give it some properties to indicate what kind of data we want to get back from it. Under Activity Type, there are a number of different options here. You can have CL Activity Type Other, which is the default. Other Navigation, saying this is for generic types of navigation. A specific type for automobile navigation. And Type Fitness, which is for any kind of human transportation, walking, running, flying in your hang glider, whatever it is, but it's different than the navigation types. What these things do is they give hints to the location manager that allow it to conserve battery life by looking at the kinds of movement that's actually happening and determining whether or not it should make the call back to your application to deliver the data. So for example, in automobile navigation, it doesn't keep delivering data when you're stopped at a stoplight. So we'll pick other. Next, you can set the desired accuracy. In other words, how close do you want that circle to get in order to be able to determine that you are at the accuracy that you want. For example, if you're walking 10 meters is probably important, but there are other sets of accuracy here we can look at. There's best, best for navigation, 100 meters, a kilometer, three kilometers. If you're just trying to figure out what city you're in, three kilometers is fine, but if you're trying to tell someone where to turn at the next corner, then probably something like best is what you want or even best for navigation. Next up, as I said, Everything is done with callbacks, so we have to be the delegate for the CL Location Manager delegate. We set that to self, and then we set our variable saying self location has been detected because in our callback, we could determine, yes, we've received a accurate enough callback, and now we're going to stop the Location Manager from giving us updates. If all we wanted to do was say, where am I, and need that only once, we can stop the Location Manager and preserve the battery. Once you've got everything set up in the Location Manager, then you call Start Updating Location. And after that, what happens is every time it is able to calculate a location, it calls this callback method called Did Update Locations and passes you an array of locations. Now, this is because sometimes between calls to Did Update Locations, there might have been multiple GPS responses or multiple cell tower responses, and the most recent location is the one at the end of the array. So we first of all check to make sure that we didn't get past an empty array, and then we go get the object at the end of the locations array, which is the most recent location. Now, as I mentioned up top, sometimes you get a location that is cached, like for example, the last location when the person got on the plane before they turned the power off, and when they got to the other end of their flight, they turned the power on, the first location you get back might be the location you were in before. We check to make sure that the location age is a recent updated location manager, not one that's cached. Then sometimes the location manager returns you coordinates that don't make any sense at all. And it'll actually return to you the horizontal and vertical accuracy of the coordinates. And if the horizontal accuracy is less than zero, that typically means it is still trying to figure out where it's at and doesn't know, so we ignore those responses. Once we've got what we think is a valid location, we set the full-on coordinates, the description of the location, which remember, as we saw, had the coordinates, the speed, the orientation, and the timestamp into our last coordinate label on the screen. Then we ask the coordinates, what was your horizontal accuracy? In other words, how many meters accurate is this particular location? And we put that into the accuracy label. If you're tracking location because you want to put things on a map, the coordinates you get back are exactly what you need. If you're tracking location because you want to do things such as name a file or create a human readable log, you're going to want to do a process called reverse geocoding. And what this does is it allows us to take the coordinates and turn it back into human readable form. And there's a class called CL Geocoder that allows us to do just that. It has a method called reverse geocode location in which you pass in a location and it passes you back an array of place marks. Place marks are the way in which it returns back to you data that describes where you are. So we make sure that we at least have one place mark in the callback, and we go get the first place mark, and we break it into five separate pieces locality, sublocality, thoroughfare, subthoroughfare, and administrative area. Locality is like the city or maybe the portion of the city, 
Thoroughfare is the street name. Subthoroughfare might be north or south. An administrative area is typically like a neighborhood name. So we go through each one of these things, make sure that that information is not nil and it's greater than zero length, and then we copy it into an individual string for each one. And then finally, we just use NS string, string with format, to put them all together. And that's what we see when we put it into our reverse geo label. Remember, if we looked at this running, and we start it, we start seeing things like 10571 North Blaney. Now here we're bicycle riding further up North Blaney in Cupertino and Bay Area. That's our administrative area. One more thing that you can do with the CL Location Manager, which is beyond the scope of this course, is something called geofencing. And what that is, is that you basically can create a geographic rectangle by using two sets of longitude and latitude and tell the location manager that you want to be notified when either you leave or enter that particular rectangle. A store, for example, might use that to allow you to detect when you're in the store. Or you might have a social networking app that allows you to automatically check in when you locate yourself at frequent places that you know, like home or work or school. Take a look at the methods on CL Location Manager for setting up location regions in order to implement geofencing. One last method that you might want to implement for your user is to know when the GPS data is bogus. In other words, you might be tracking things and you might want to indicate to the user that, hey, I no longer know where you are. So you get a callback from the location manager called did fail with error and allows you to understand why. Such as you're no longer getting any GPS data or the user's turned off the authorization. You'll get a callback here in did fail with error. And that's our look at location services.